My boyfriend, roommate, and I were doing some ghost hunting tonight. We live in Independence, Oregon, about 20 minutes south of Salem, and about 10 minutes from Western Oregon University, and we saw this strange light near the train tracks. At first, we thought it might be a person walking, or maybe someone on a bike, but then it just disappeared. There's nothing but brush on either side of the tracks, so we decided to check it out. We didn't run into anybody or find anything. I got a really bad vibe as we were continuing to follow the tracks, so we turned around. At first, we thought it might be the spirit of a miner, since there used to be coal mines around the area. But not too long ago, my boyfriend mentioned to me that it might have been a skinwalker, or maybe a wendigo, and also mentioned a feeling of being watched. He and I have had before while walking along the Willamette River. I realized that the feeling I had had as we were walking along the tracks was the same feeling I had had when we were walking along the river. A feeling of being watched and stalked. We want to go back and investigate more, but I was wondering if anyone else experienced or knew of anything like this in the area. I think there's something strange living in the woods near my house. I live in a rural area in Mississippi. I won't say exactly where for privacy reasons, and the area is surrounded by a vast forest that is littered with deer camps and thick foliage. I've seen something weird in there since I was 13, but before I get into that, I want to give some context. My family has lived on the property since my grandparents moved there to start a family. My dad and his siblings all grew up there. Then my dad and mom moved into the house next door, and my uncle moved into the house down the street. From there, I lived in the house for the next 18 years before I left for college, and I've since moved to a nearby town. The property holds several acres of dense woodland, hills, and steep embankments with several footpaths tracing throughout that lead to deer camps and hunting stands. Some of the paths also lead to hunting camps that belong to other people who live in the area. When I was 13, I was walking along one of these footpaths when I heard a tree branch break and something land with a loud thud just a couple of yards off the path. I looked over just in time to see something humanoid barreling off into the forest on all fours. It was naked and its skin was paper white. That was all I could discern. I could only see it for a couple of seconds before it disappeared. I didn't see it again for several weeks until I was coming out of the forest through a path behind my grandparents' house. It was raining and I was running to make it back home when I heard something shuffling around in one of the sheds in my grandparents' backyard. I thought this was weird considering the sheds were full of clutter and old junk that we didn't even use so there shouldn't have even been anyone in there. I looked inside, and that's when I saw what I've come to call the pale man up close. It was completely hairless, and crouched down in the piles of junk with its back turned to me. It was very thin, with a human-like body, with visible ribs, and strangely long limbs. It looked back over its shoulder to look at me, and I could see that it had deep black eye sockets, with wide eyes staring back at me. It didn't have any lips, just teeth, and a mouth pulled back in a horrible grimace. It also didn't have a nose. It screeched at me, and that's when I ran back to my house. I told my dad what had happened, but when he looked to check the shed, gun in hand, he found it completely empty. The next sighting isn't mine, but one I learned of by complete happenstance. I was participating in a summer work program this past summer, and I struck up a conversation with one of the other participants while we were waiting for orientation to begin. It came up that we were both interested in Native American folklore and urban legends, when he asked me if I have ever heard of the rake. Since the rake is the closest thing I've ever been able to find appearance-wise in regards to what I saw all those years ago, I told him my story. He looked shocked when I told him this and lamented that he had a similar experience and the details shook me to my core. It happened in 2014, the same year as my experience. 
It was deer season, and he was sitting up in his deer stand before the sun had come up. While he was waiting, he had heard something scaling the side of his deer stand, which stood 15 feet in the air. He looked over and saw a skeletal face peering into the window. Something was clinging to the side of his stand, whatever it was. It was startled and fell to the ground. He heard it thump against the ground and watched it limp off into the forest. He described it as looking like the Wendigos from the game Until Dawn, a point I also made to my college friend who introduced me to the game. I asked him if he could take me to the place he saw it, but he said he doesn't visit that stand anymore because he's simply too afraid. I still asked him what general area it was in so I could drive through the area and see if I would find anything. And he did give me an answer, and this is what really startled me. I can't give the exact address, again for privacy reasons, but he said, so you know where X road meets Y road? It was right up the road from there. My house was directly on the intersection of those two roads, meaning that whatever he saw was in the general vicinity of the thing that I saw. I didn't get any more information out of him, but I suspected that it happened at one of those deer camps that are connected to my property. This spurred me to look into the matter a bit more seriously. I consider myself an amateur paranormal investigator and have been going on searches through the area in previous weeks. Every now and then I'll hear something really big walking out of sight in the forest nearby, either obscured by trees or on the opposite side of a hill that I'm walking around, somehow always being out of sight. It will walk in sync with me, and when I stop walking, I'll hear it take a few steps before it stops, restarting only when I started walking again. An incident like this happened about a week ago when I heard it trailing directly behind me as I made my way, following a small creek just off of one of the paths. There was a steep hill on my right side, and I walked around the hill and started going in the opposite direction. I could still hear the creature on the other side of the hill. I looked up and I thought I saw something humanoid moving at the top of the hill, ducking to hide behind a thick tree. The hill was too steep for me to climb up to the very top and investigate, so I missed out on that opportunity. I'm not 100% sure that I actually saw something in this instance. It was just a fleeting glimpse. But I do know that I didn't hear any more footsteps following me after this. I went for a full-blown stakeout yesterday. I camped in a clearing near to a deer stand, which is only a couple hundred yards from where my friend had his sighting, and an even shorter distance to where I had my first sighting. I revisited the area where I had my sighting and saw something that piqued my curiosity. The area is full of very steep hills and washouts where rainwater erodes the dirt between these hills, making the area very precarious. There is a downward slope just off the path where I had my encounter, and I saw a collection of sticks stacked together against a tree in the washout. I actually climbed down into the washout to investigate this further. The sticks were assembled, almost like to lean against the tree, but they also curved, kind of in a bowl shape. It looked like something had woven together a nest out of twigs, something about the size of a man could fit into. It also used larger branches, sometimes three inches thick, to strengthen the structure. I don't know of any local animal that could have built something like this, and I don't think it was naturally occurring. If this was the work of Pale Man, I don't think he'd have used it correctly. I couldn't find any bones, droppings, footprints, or any sign of something actually living in it. I did take pictures of this nest, though, and can upload them. I then returned to my tent and watched the area until the sun went down and I went to sleep, planning to wake up around 3 a.m. to perform my stakeout. When the time came, I stayed inside my tent and looked out into the night through my tent window. I soon discovered that it was incredibly hard to see in this much darkness, and I couldn't see anything clearly far beyond my tent. I did see something, however, an indiscernible shape situated at the base of two conjoined trees. It was way too far away for me to discern what exactly it was, but I know it was about two to three feet tall. I'm sure you're wondering 
why I didn't use a flashlight, to which my answer is the only one I had available was the one on my cell phone. It wouldn't have been strong enough to reach whatever was resting at the base of the tree, and if the creature was watching me from nearby, a flashlight certainly would have alerted it, and I was afraid of distressing it and possibly causing it to attack. Although, admittedly, in the times it has been following me through the woods, it's never seemed keen on actually attacking me. It just seems to be curiously observing, just out of sight. I kept my eyes locked on the shape for several minutes, and it didn't do much but move an inch. After about a half an hour of nothing happening, I determined it must have been a bush that looked weird in the complete darkness. I was tired, and what animal could have possibly kept that still for so long? Soon after that, I fell asleep, and then I woke up at 8 the next morning. While I was packing up my things, I looked at the two trees where the thing nested beside. There was absolutely nothing there, not a bush, not a tree stump. The spot where I saw something was completely barren. Maybe there actually was something watching me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it means anything. I don't know if anything happened or if it was a trick of the eyes or what have you. This is just what I noticed. That's my story. Like I said, I consider myself an amateur paranormal investigator. I'm only showing you this here because I'd like everybody's input on where I should go with this next investigation, as well as any information that you think would help. Whatever I saw very closely resembles the rake or a wendigo. In fact, that's really the only thing I've been able to find that matches up with it. That being said, it's very difficult to find any reliable information on the matter, so I figured I would come here. I will be continuing my searches through the area, and I will be continuing stakeouts, and I do expect to keep you updated if anything comes up. So, I have had several weird experiences in this house since I moved here at the end of May and have posted about a few. My friend who's a skeptic and his wife came over and I told them about the encounter so we started exploring around a bit to see if we could see any shadows or anything. Well, across the street from my house is a grain elevator and even though it looks like any other grain elevator, it kinda has a creepy vibe to it. My friend, who we will call T, decided to walk over to it around 10 p.m. on August 10th last year. He walked over alone while my wife, T's wife and myself, talked in the front yard. We see T walk back and he looks pale and flushed and he says he saw a really long bony hand with long bony fingers and a really long arm reach around the corner of the grain silo about 8 or 9 o'clock off the ground and he shined his flashlight at it, and it disappeared. He has never believed in the paranormal, or humanoids, or anything like that, and he wasn't making it up, because we could tell how genuinely scared he was. Well, we were all curious, so he and I walked back over to the area, and we both saw a head pop out of the corner real quick, and kept hearing footsteps behind us. We would get these cold patches where the air felt 10 degrees colder, and we would both get covered in goosebumps. We walked for about 10 minutes along the tracks and kept hearing noises and asking each other if we both heard them. We went and got our wives and didn't tell them that we saw or felt and brought them over and they both said that it felt way colder in certain spots and kept getting goosebumps too. At one point I swore I felt something brush against my hand. So afterwards, we were standing in my front yard, and I told T what he saw kind of sounded like a skinwalker or wendigo, and started showing him drawings, and he got freaked out, and said that is exactly what he saw. We went back over once more to see if we could see any more sightings of it, and he freaked out and looked pale and sweaty, and swears he saw a yellow glowing eye about nine feet off the ground peering around the building where he and I saw what looked like a head. Like I said, he was super skeptical, and after this, he was terrified and sweating and just looked flushed. I don't know what he saw or what we heard, but it wasn't animals because it would only be a few footsteps that would stop soon after we did, 
and whatever he saw was probably nine feet tall. We even tried to recreate what he saw when he saw the hand, but we couldn't reach as high as he saw it, just standing there on the ground. We both had this feeling of dread and being watched the entire time we walked on the tracks. We were all sober at the time too. No drinking, no drugs of any kind at the time. Sorry for this long story, but I want to give you as much detail as possible. I do live about 5-10 miles from a mass Native American slaughter site in the 1800s and a battlefield. Does anybody else have any stories about a Wendigo or Skinwalker in Eastern Washington? I would really love to know. Okay, so my friends and I frequent a park in Shawnee, Kansas. It's right on the Kansas River, and we go there quite often. There have been a couple of nights where we've seen small human-like creatures that are very pale white, have bright yellow eyes, and they tend to stand behind and in trees, swaying their bodies back and forth like an upside-down pendulum. They almost remind me of the Falmer from Skyrim. I've had a couple of buddies say that they've seen them too. A couple of farmers in the area say they've seen their eyes bobbing back and forth from a distance without needing any source of light to cause them to glow. And the one thing that every story has in common, including my own, is that they can move so fast that they almost look like lightning shooting across the tree line. One farmer even claiming that he saw one clear a half a mile gap in the blink of an eye. I've seen them a few times, but in all of my experiences, they've stood about five feet tall, been incredibly docile and skittish, and generally only appear on foggy nights. Besides the fog, they don't seem to match up to any popular stories I've ever heard about skinwalkers, wendigo, or rakes, but the similarities in appearance besides size matches up perfectly. This really piques my interest, and given my recent introduction to the paranormal, I'm really curious to hear your guys' take on this. This was back in high school, prom night. I was a sophomore loser, just helping take down decorations, so no booze for me. Full disclosure. I was 16 and it might have been 1am by the time I was driving home from the train station where the prom was held. Actually a really nice venue to be honest. This was in rural South Virginia. At the time I drove this piece of shit 1994 F-150, which was built like a freaking tank. I wasn't super familiar with the roads around the train station, but the one I was on had cornfields on both sides for a few acres back. Then it turned into deep woods. So I'm headed home, doing maybe 45 miles an hour, when all of a sudden, half of my truck pops up and down like I've just hit the mother of all speed bumps on one side. And having just gotten my license, I was like, oh, fuck me. So I pulled over to make sure I hadn't messed up anything and blown a tire. I put the truck in park and looked back for a second and see this huge mass just lying in the middle of the road that 100% was not there when I stopped. My first instinct is, I just killed someone's dog and my heart drops. I've got my hands on the door handle, ready to go see if this dog is okay, when the hair on my arms stands up. On instinct, I look in the rearview mirror to see the thing getting up, and at first I was stoked, maybe surprised that it was bigger than I thought, but stoked that it was alive. Then it really stood up, like on two legs. Mind you, this was all illuminated by shitty brake lights in the middle of fucking nowhere, and I was pretty freaked out. But when it stood up, I could tell it was kind of hunched over. And even then, it was almost as tall as the 9 or 10 foot corn in the fields. Massive ribcage, emaciated, long face, hollow looking thing just standing up and looks dead at me before shuffling across the road, back into the fields. I drove home, cried a bit, and went to sleep. Found a massive dent in my fender the next morning, and I knew I had really hit something. Fucked me up for a good while, and... Now I still don't like driving at night.
I know Skinwalker's stories are a little overplayed, but this is genuinely one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. For a little context, I'm half Native American, with most of my family being from Oklahoma. I never really believed any of the stories I heard as a kid until I'm pretty sure I had a real encounter. When I was a kid, maybe fourth grade, me, my mom, and my stepdad would visit my grandparents' property in Texas to shoot guns or fish and whatnot. Their property was surrounded by a couple of acres of land, so sometimes I would wander off from the house and explore wherever I could. One day, I decided to go for a short walk in the woods like normal. Maybe five minutes into my walk, mind you I could still see the house in the distance, I hear my mom's voice say my name. It sounded distant but so distorted and close at the same time. I called back to her and looked around me. As I was turning around, I see this tall creature with gnarly teeth and gray, tattered skin looking at me from behind a tree. I stood there, completely shocked because of how terrifying this thing looked. It started to move from behind the tree towards my direction, and I took off, running and crying back to the house. This is easily one of the most terrifying things that's ever happened to me, and I never even spoke about it until about a year ago. Before this point, I had never had any cryptid paranormal experiences, but since then, I've had countless wherever I go or move to, despite me being only 18 years old. Like I said, I know Skinwalker stories have been a bit overplayed over the past couple of years, but I really wanted to share this and see if anyone around the area has had any familiar or similar experiences in their own. This is both experiences that have happened in the past and something that happened tonight that scared the shit out of me. I have wanted to talk about this for a while, but this one seemed like a homeless person at first. I have a few other encounters I'm tempted to put in from when I was very young, but I'm worried I was just your average overactive kid. Oh, and sorry if some of what I say doesn't make any sense, because my adrenaline is through the roof and fight or flight instincts are going nuts. So for a few months now, something weird has been hanging around and outside of my house. The first time it became apparent was when one night I was in the basement. Outside the window is a porch and there is a light switch for the lights by the door. I went upstairs for a bit when I realized later I left the lights on and I went downstairs to turn them off. When I came down, the porch lights were on. Now my father has tried endlessly to hook them to a timer with no success to his disappointment. I assumed that he had finally figured it out and paid the lights no mind. What I hadn't known was my dad had given up weeks ago and put it in an average light switch. Next morning I go down and see the lights are still on. I assume the timer didn't turn them off so I go to shut them off and they discover to my shock it's a switch. This causes me to panic a bit because that meant someone had been out there and the rest of my family was asleep last night and quite likely they could have been watching me. By the way, I have an extreme fear of being watched. A few weeks later, I'm sitting downstairs on the couch. I'm home alone. It's the dead of night and my dog who is very relaxed with frequent events but has a habit of being too chill sometimes. Suddenly, she perks up and looks to the window. Out of habit, I look with her and see something hunched over and white dropping down over our fence and running past the windows. Thanks to the dirty windows and the glare of the lights, I couldn't even hope to make out what I saw or how big it was, but I yelped panicked and called my buddies. They were skeptical and told me it was probably a raccoon and I ended up agreeing. I went outside. My dog's older chocolate lab and my German pugil, which is a German shepherd pug beagle mix, the one who had been with me. I went out, trying to see what it was right away with my dogs, and had two very different reactions. The lab was pacing and sniffing and looking around and being very anxious. The other was wagging her tail and looking at the trees the way she does when I have treats. Suddenly, from said trees I hear a loud, open groan. 
These are big, strong old trees, and they don't groan. Not unless something is on them. And the mountain lion, who went up them a year ago, proved that. Now I tried shining a light up there, but saw nothing. But the trees are thick, and it wasn't until that mountain lion growled last time that I saw him up there in broad daylight. FYI, it is weird seeing mountain lions here when authorities come through. They ended up determining it was sick and malnourished, so they weren't shocked and wandered into the area. I ended up going inside because my pugil was moving between the trees with the same look. My labs seemed to be getting increasingly anxious, but now was staying away from the trees and just watching them. My pugil and me, and I wasn't seeing anything, so. But all night I heard weird things. The worst was a loud slam like a tree branch had fallen, but there was nothing there. And my pugil kept going to windows and acting unhappy about being kept in. But the rest was like the sound of something on the roof, pebbles being thrown at the window, and the return of a woodpecker, who should have been dead after my cats got the poor thing with a vengeance. Now, here was the climax that drove me here. It's been a couple of months now, and I have mostly forgotten about it. Occasionally, I'll hear something weird on the front porch, or footsteps, or the porch lights will get turned on mysteriously. But they're small things. Tonight, I was with my sister and FaceTiming with a friend in the basement again, when we hear a screeching sound. Now, my first concern was my two of three cat siblings who had taken to taking over the area, which meant they liked to fight the raccoons. Now, the sound didn't sound like any raccoon I'd ever heard, but they do make odd sounds. So, I run to the window in the next room, where I believe I'll be able to see them, and then go out to break the fight up from a safe distance. But I instead let out a scream and a flurry of curse words. Outside, standing taller than me for sure, I'm six feet, so pretty tall, was a gaunt, white humanoid figure with its back turned to the window. When I got back to the window and looked back out, it was nowhere to be seen. I at first thought it was my mind playing tricks on me. There was snow on the ground and I was dying for a rational explanation because it scared me bad and I was shaking. I told my sister and she just laughed at me. I went upstairs later that night and got everything ready for the night and locked up. When I went back up front, I froze. I could see my cat who seemed agitated but calm for the most part on the garage roof looking at something on my porch. That something was the same white figure back turned again except this time it was squatted down and looking at my cat. It didn't seem confrontational itself but then for God's sakes this sent me into tears. It turned its whole body, twisted, and it seemed to kind of straighten as it did it. I can only think of a meerkat as an example, but it was so sudden, I was sure I heard bones crack through the window. I never saw the face. As soon as it turned, flight or fight kicked in and ran into my room as fast as I could. The last thing I saw of it as I slammed my door was it on the railing as it leaped towards what I assume was a nearby tree. Ever since, I've been in my room, shaking, crying, wheezing in an hysterical fit. I like paranormal stuff, but nobody should have to experience it. Now that I've calmed down enough to type, I've been thinking about its actions and back to previous events. I'm trying to explain this to myself. I at first drew a comparison to the creepy pasta creature, the rake. That didn't help my panic, as you can imagine. But the rake was always highly hostile. This thing seemed calm and relaxed most of the time. I don't know what I saw, and it's freaking me out. I want this down before I go crying into sleep. Please, when I wake up, give me an explanation, because I don't want this thing to be real. But this wasn't some homeless guy.